Hey, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Natalie. Today's video, I show you how to use the CSS transform property and how to integrate ready-made CSS animations into your Elementor Pro website. Before we begin, consider showing me a little bit of love by, by hitting the like button or to subscribe to the channel where I talk all things related to WordPress websites. So what is CSS? Cascading Style Sheets is a mechanism for adding styles, fonts, colors, spacing to web pages. A CSS rule consists of a selector and a declaration block. The selector points to the HTML element you want to style. The declaration block contains one or more declarations separated by semicolons. And each declaration includes a CSS property name and a value separated by a colon. Multiple CSS declarations are separated with semicolons and declaration blocks are surrounded by curly braces. The CSS transform property lets you rotate, scale, skew or translate an element. It modifies the coordinate space of the CSS, the X and the Y axis. I mouse over the element to see CSS transform rules applied. This website is a great place to get started. It's very well organized by chapters and you can play live to get results and to experiment on your own. So what's the purpose? It's to create useful interactions to best fit your design. Elementor Editor in Pro users as this feature integrate into any widget so you can create beautiful custom designs to your site. In web design, even a small effect can change the overall user experience. The idea concept behind mouse over effect is to reduce the effort that the user has to make to view more details or to display additional data or important feedback. However, keep it simple to not overload the page. One of the biggest issues is that there is no over effect on touch screen. What you can do though is to disable it in mobile devices. I'm within the about page and let's set the heading mouse hover over effect interactions to apply to the heading anytime visitors over the widget element. This works only with widgets and not within sections, columns or inner sections, at least at this time. With Elementor panel to apply the CSS property, all you have to do is to click on the advanced tab and then on the transform panel. I only want to create interaction, interactions for my users when they mouse over, over my main heading. So you need to click on the over panel tab. To skew, I try minus 10 pixels on the X axis. The X axis is the horizontal axis. Now mouse over over the element to get an interaction result. Not bad, really. We must set now the transition duration. I set to 1000, meaning the transition takes one second long. The skew Y axis. I try to insert minus 10 pixels in the Y axis, which is the vertical axis. No, I don't like it. You can turn off here or manually, or you can restore to the default by clicking on the default icon. Now I want my heading to be offset to the right when mouse over over the element. So offset on the X axis 50 pixels to offset to the left. There we go. Motion transition like the Disney movies. Now let's combine together a rotation effect with the offset over effect. The rotation I put 6 and then let's try out instead one value, one pixel. Much better now. This time is a subtle effective smooth over effect down to the responsive settings. I want to disable these over effects on mobile devices. I hide on tablet and on mobile mode view. Navigate over to the device icon located at the bottom. And now with the heading selected, we are able to set the over effects on all devices. The desktop settings here are applied to all website breakpoint. Tablet here are applied to 1024 screen size on for mobile 767 screen size. Let's try now to flip the horizontal and then the flip vertical. To disable, just click on this restart icon. We can also tweak each of the over effects by devices. 
As I click on the little icon pencil on the left side of set icon control inside each one. Click on the desktop icon and then decide which device you want to edit by clicking on the device icon. I click tablet now and I set my offset X to be 100 pixels instead of 50 pixels. Choose the percent unit as it is a responsive one. And then for mobile devices I turn off by setting to zero. Let me show you another example you can use with the rotation CSS property. Add a new element to Elementor section with one column and I also added an image widget. I added this PNG arrow file. And let's play now a little bit. Remember, transform CSS only works inside Elementor with widgets and not inside sections, columns or inner sections, at least at this time. Go to the Advanced tab, Transform and enable the rotation property. For desktops, I put 30 pixels. Transition duration is 1000, meaning it's one second long. Now I switch the vertical Y axis to the left. As you can see, the motion curve is different when someone mouse over, over. Now it's pointing out to the icon location. Cool. Now I switch the vertical Y to the center by clicking on the bottom anchor point. The motion is quite different and quickly preview your, your animation by using the navigator feature. Press Ctrl Y from your keyboard, toggle on and off in the eye icon. It's time to learn about how to insert ready-made CSS animation into your Elementor website. We can add custom CSS to any Elementor widget. We can insert on for columns, section, widgets. I first navigate over to Animista website. I have chosen this one to start off. It's quite easy to add into your Elementor website. Don't feel intimidated as I go along all the necessary steps. First, with auto prefixes selected, copy to your clipboard. Then go to Elementor editor and inside the CSS custom section under the advanced tab paste here all the code Thing has happened after refreshing. Why is that? I mean, I got no typo or warning error, so why am I not seeing the animation? Well, simple, we need to tweak some little details. Just copy the class name and then paste it in the CSS class section without any dot or symbol. I will leave the link down below if you want to download it. I like to check by disabling and en enable within the navigator. Voila, I like it a lot. We have an en engaging subtle animation. Let's breaking down the code into pieces. So the first part is the class name. It has been given the name of tracking in expand with specific settings for the animation function. It has been set to cubic Bezier curve mode. I recommend you play around with this website. You are able to experiment with the four modes of CSS animations curve works if you want to go deeper. This is important as you are setting how an animation progresses through the duration of each cycle. Another web page I recommend you is from Mozilla. The second part is animation itself. It consists of three parts the animation beginning which is at the 0% which has two properties declared then at 40 and 40% the animation the text op opacity changes and completes this cycle with 100% opacity at 100% opacity the letter spacing is squeezing out the SS is magic amazing do you know how to find out Elementor CSS class names and IDs with the Chrome Inspector tool? Let me know in the comments below if you need this kind of video tutorial for the future release. Let's add a cool text shadow effect. I have a heading widget with this color and then I go to the advanced tab and in the custom CSS box I paste here this CSS snip. I will leave this for you if you wanted to download it. It has a CSS class named as animate. 
Go up to the Advanced tab and assign there the CSS class name. Preview by using the Navigator Element of Feature or mouse over on top of it. Breaking down further the syntax code, we have a class attribute called Animate. Next, we assign the CSS animation property called My Animation. This animation property is a shorthand property for the animation settings. A 33% high headed the text shadow property with multiple shadows values. The number two numbers represent the values. The first one is the horizontal offset of the shadow. Positive value is offset to the right of the box. The second number two value specifies the vertical offset of the shadow. And the third one specifies the blur and radius. The last one is the shadow color. Let's vary it a bit. Highlight the 66% and replace black with the red. Let's preview. In in a matter of seconds, we added our custom CSS to our design. Play around with it. Insert new CSS valid values. Provide me with any feedback in the comment section below about what do you think about this new video tutorial format. Do you want a specific video tutorial about CSS or about the use of the inspector tool for finding the class and ID names attributes? Thank you so much for watching, see you in my next video, take care, bye bye!